Mr. Truck, I'm here in Detroit. Look, breaking news. This is the 2020 Super Duty. I'm here with Ford to learn about all this cool stuff. Some I can talk about it, some I can't talk about it. But it is cool. They did so many changes. We got a 10 speed automatic. We got a new improved diesel power stroke. We've got a new 7.3. We've been waiting for this 7.3 forever. We're learning about all that stuff. And when I show this video to you, we'll have all the numbers, hopefully. But it's cool. I've never seen so many vehicles brought out at one time. They brought out a whole bunch of stuff. Can't talk about it, but they brought it all out. And it is so cool. I'm here with. What's your name? My name is Aaron Bresky. Aaron is so cool. You're like one of the top guys. What, what is your job title? So my job title is Vehicle Engineering Manager at Ford Motor Company. I'm the Super Duty uh, truck. Cody Christian makes your trailer smoother ride. Isolates between the truck and the trailer. So your trailer doesn't fill the truck. The truck doesn't fill the trailer. Your horses have a better ride. Your cargo has a better ride. You have a better ride in the truck. So you are the big cheese. This is good. I like talking to the big cheese. They know everything. Sometimes they even tell me everything. But now this truck, is this a Lariat or what is this? This is actually a, a STX. Oh, this uh, is a basic work well, truck. This is the this oh, is where the work gets done. This is cool. That's what I used to buy when I, I was trying to find an STX F, X4 when I was looking for trucks. Couldn't find them. So I had to buy an XLT, which is fine. I'm cheap. But this, you tell me, this grill has more airflow, all the different things you've done to the air box and all that for this diesel. I guess this would also be for the gas. Well, all the dualies would have this special grill with more airflow or just the diesel? Yeah, it's just the diesel, uh, Kent. So uh, new for 2020, um, we ended up uh, developing a brand new um, uh, grill uh, that works with all that we brought out uh, throughout today um, for powertrains. And basically here we are, only three years after bringing out the all new Super D, we're getting, bringing a significant upgrade uh, for the 2020 model, both in uh, powertrains and technology and capability and um, even uh, cooling. That's what you're talking about here with the grill. Well, that's cool. So every dually with a diesel, that's the only grill you're going to get. I mean, they have a lot of cool grills, but I, this, I like this grill. I'm a chrome guy, and it's evenly spaced. I think it looks a very balanced grill. I like this. And this is your dually diesel grill. So remember that. When you're looking at these trucks and you want to haul the big loads, look for that grill. You'll know it's a dually diesel. But wait, there's more. <laughs> Detroit always has more. This new Ford 2020 Super Duty, it's a 350 Dually, one we're looking at right behind us here, has more stuff. And, and what else can you show me about this truck? Yeah, so it's uh, more than just the grill, uh, Ken. It basically has uh, so many upgrades uh, behind under the hood. There's um, uh, cooling system upgrades, there's uh, fan and clutch drive upgrades, there's um, cooling ceiling, and it's all to get that air through that uh, cooling pack and into that engine so that it can do the work of getting that uh, torturous uh, heavy trailer uh, down the road and even in the most extreme uh, conditions like up on the Ike. Oh cool, so it's got that big snorkel goes to the air box and that comes through at these vents and these vents? Or? Absolutely, so the um, air induction, let's transition there, happy you brought that up. The air induction uh, new, it's all new for 2020. Uh, back in uh, 2017 um, uh, through 19 we had the uh, air box um, in a different uh, location. You can see here is the snorkel that gets the more air from this lip, and then you got more down there. You got a double right. snorkel. So the sn the uh, lower inlet uh, snorkel uh, down here feeding through the grill itself, and every grill has been designed to provide that air charge uh, at the lower uh, portion of the air induction system. So we have this upper and uh, as well as the lower to get that uh, cool charge to the engine. Well, we all know more air is better on a diesel turbo. And this is different, like GM and put the, they put these scoops in the hood. You decided to keep it off the hood, keep your visibility up, and put it down here where the air comes in and does what it's supposed to do. This big, big air box. Holy cow, it's a big tube going in here. That's like an auger pipe. Holy cow. That's right. It's man. big. You can really flow the air. And just like what I was describing, we ended up moving the battery back. And the business end of getting that air uh, to the engine, both on the gas and the diesel, are moved up uh, here. And it basically is uh, getting that uh, fresh, cold charge directly into that engine after it uh, is uh, filtered. Wow, there's a lot of stuff in that engine compartment. Holy cow. And so there's still two two batteries, of course. Two one on each side. You just move diesel, this yes. one back. Yep. That's nicer because sometimes these air boxes are a pain in the butt to get to. This looks a little more convenient. Now, I don't know if you can see it from here, but tell me about the three radiators. Yeah, on uh, the heaviest towing models with the diesel, we've added a third radiator. We call it an auxiliary cooler. It's down at the bottom, and it actually is fed uh, through the center of the uh, bumper. 
Oh, it's down by the. It's way down by the bumper. Okay. That's right. Yes. So they're still. They still slanted like they were. Are they this angled looking radiator thing. Yeah, or? they're still uh, slanted like they uh, were, and then there's an additional uh, third auxiliary cooler uh, for that extra um, cooling capacity. Wow. So you can take these out to the desert, haul those big trailers, and. That's right. It's, <laughs> it's uh, basically what works best up the hill in those conditions. Oh yes, that helps us, and then that keeps the air cleaner clean. We're worried about anything else. We got a clean hood. We got better visibility. All the things you want when you're pulling big trailers. You want big mirrors, a lot of visibility. This is great. Yeah, and new for uh, 2020 as well. We ended up uh, bringing uh, some steering technology to bring uh, Pro Trailer Backup Assist uh, I'm, to I'm the. I'm glad you. I'm glad you remembered that. I will try to video that through the window, the, the wheel well as much as I can. But I know. I I, I just wish you would have put rack and pinion, but nobody asked me. You know, semis have tried it. They've all quit it. They've all tried it a couple of years. Cascadia had it. Kenworth had it. I know Ram even had it on a two wheel drive. I don't think they have it anymore. But I love rack and pinion. It's nice and tight. But you still have a way of using like an electronic addition that does that make the steering a little tighter or what does that do besides the pro backup assist yeah it basically is there's many aspects uh, more than pro uh, trailer backup assist like you mentioned kent is it uh, does um, improve the effort uh, it's a variable assist throughout uh, uh, any uh, speed within the vehicle so at parking lot uh, speeds that um, what we call it is an electronic variable overlay to our hydraulic system um, which was uh, uh, conventional from 17 through 19 and that variable overlay will help to do the work to actually steer the steering wheel so we get anywhere from very light uh, parking um, steering efforts to uh, very um, uh, tuned in um, feel down the road so it's variable throughout driving and then it also brings up those other uh, technology uh, pro trailer backup assist capability cool so it's automatic you don't adjust anything absolutely it's uh, all automatic it's uh, handled by the uh, controller and in addition to this uh, Kent there's uh, new for 2020 is as well uh, selectable drive modes so we're gonna have five selectable drive modes and why I bring the selectable drive modes up now is because they also tie into that electronic variable overlay so there's uh, if you go into tow hall there'll be a different uh, tuning for that uh, steering system than there would be in normal mode for example and what have you Oh, that's cool. I know the Raptor does all that. Changes your steering modes for everything you do, which is nice. Now, I know in the half ton, where 2015 or whenever they did that, they had that steering gear in the steering wheel itself, and that gave you a lot of variable there and, and input. So does this act like that? Is it similar to that, but just it's in a different place? It's on your steering shaft coming out of the steering wheel column going to the gearbox? Yeah, basically it's for Super Duty because of the uh, loads that we are managing, like uh, snow plow and uh, those excessive uh, front-end uh, loads. Um, we ended up uh, putting it uh, between the um, uh, steering column and the steering gear itself. So this uh, electronic variable overlay is a, a gear uh, and motor system that's implemented in the uh, middle of the I-shaft. Okay, cool. Cool, exactly. Yeah, that's awesome. So now we're going to look at some of these other new improvements, new changes to the 2020 Super Duty. And I found another Ford engineer. This one is Joel Beltramo. There you go. And this is your new baby, the 7.3 gas engine that replaces the 6.8. So I thought we were replacing the 6.2, but you're keeping the 6.2. Keeping the 6.2. And this yeah. replaces that, uh, that V10 thing. Well, it replaces the V10. It's also a step up above the 6.2, below the 6.7 in the Super Duty pickup trucks. Okay, and this comes with a 10 speed. It comes with a 10 speed in the Super Duties. Okay. And so this is a uh, enhancement of the performance capabilities in this segment of the Super Duties. Well, cool. And now this is, you guys are going back in time to a push rod. And I'm so used to the overhead cam engines that you kind of led the way on that. And now you're going, I don't know, you're not going backwards. It's a, what's the reason for going to the push rod? It's really an engineering thing. Um, as we look at the over 8,500 pound segment, and specifically even at the over 14,000 pound, those engines need to be a bit larger displacement to give best fuel economy when you're have, hauling heavy loads. And so as we worked out how those trucks are really used, we determined the optimum displacement 7.3 liters. And part of how you get good fuel economy while you're hauling those loads is you want to run stoichiometric air fuel mixture. Oh, that's a big word, hold on, yeah. what's that? What, what that means is, you're running just the perfect amount of fuel for how much air you're taking in. Okay. You're not overfueling running enrichment because some engines do that to protect against knock, you know, and also to cool things. This engine's designed to be able to make lots of power running stoichiometric and knowing that they're going to be running there um, it allows us then to optimize the displacement for what power levels the trucks need and that's how we calculate that it. It really needs to be 7.3 liters. <laughs> 
that's kind of like the uh, the variable oil pumps just when you need it so you're doing everything really efficiently then yeah and so ground up we we know that we want to be able to keep the uh, engine this configuration for our customers running efficiently for quite a few years and you know I'm talking about vehicle years of production right. and so we built it to meet the future wants of the customers and so you mentioned the oil pump yes this engine for example has a variable displacement oil pump in it it's controlled by the PCM. There's a sensor in the oil gallery that uh, measures the exact oil pressure. And so, because it's variable displacement, if the engine ever starts to wear, let's say it's got three, 400,000 miles on it, it's got some wear, the uh, computer will maintain the same set point for oil pressure. The pump will just pump a little bit more oil to keep it right where it belongs. Well, that's cool. It's an automatic engine. <laughs> it, it is intended to run very, very long amounts of time and miles without needing uh, repair. And so it's designed from the ground up to be a tough truck engine. And so, you know, our customers, they're, they're not talking about they run their truck for 100,000 miles and they replace it. Right. They're talking many, many years. Oh, yeah. And, you know, in the old days, and we worked in our gas engines all the time, we did alternators, starters, distributors, points, condensers. But, you know, now, you know, these engines all run over 200,000 miles. We're used to that. Exactly. We're used to not fixing anything on them. And that you're continuing that with this. Now, this is what, aluminum heads and then the graphite type block, like, like a diesel? No, or? this is a cast iron block. Um, for the pressures we run, the iron's actually the optimum solution. And so it's iron block, aluminum heads. So that way it is similar to the diesel, um, but it is engineered part by part for what the total system needs to be. Okay, because you know, I was talking about my, uh, my old 250 was a 6.2, and I knew what kind of fuel mileage it gets, and it was uh, uh, with a six speed. So I'm thinking now the seven three with a 10 speed, I could be beating my fuel mileage that I used to have if I drove normally. Yeah, if you drive normally, we're expecting improved efficiency from the engine. And then obviously the 10 R transmission is a very nice improvement for the customer. Because on one side, as you said, it brings fuel economy. The engine brings more torque to that transmission. So now what you have is, is if you want to accelerate, it can pick a much more optimal gear paired with our torque curve to give you a more efficient way to deliver the acceleration that you want. So is the torque curve on this now with that 10 speed lower? I know the 3.5 EcoBoost is really low, almost like a diesel. So how what's the torque curve like on this? Is it at 4,000 RPM, 3,000? Um, yeah, to speak about a torque peak, th there will be a torque peak when we advertise, by definition. There he won't tell me anything. But the thing is, it's intended to have a very broad torque curve. And so when we're running that stoichiometric air fuel mixture so we're efficient, the 10-speed can pick the right gear to give you the acceleration you want while minimizing fuel consumption at the same time. Well, that's cool. I mean, it's, they just keep getting better and better, and, you know, they last forever. That's, we used to always think you had to get a diesel to get kind of mileage, but, you know, I, I've seen that in these new gas engines are very, very good about lasting a long time. And that's what we want because, you know, stuff's expensive, so it takes a while to get them paid off, and then you want them to last longer after they're paid off. It, exactly. As we went through this engine, you know, the, the goal from my team was that, hey, here's the durability requirement. you just got to meet it. We wanted to be confident this thing would go way beyond the expectations of our customers. So we we're looking at end of test, looking for onset of wear, and looking to, like, we didn't want to say we just cleared the hurdle. We want to be confident we could run much longer without a problem. Oh, cool. Now, is this just direct or is it direct and port like the EcoBoost? Uh, this engine was because we optimized the displacement so carefully and number of features in it to get fuel economy, we didn't have to go over to direct inject it. Oh. We're able to stay oh. port fuel injected oh. and deliver the fuel economy the customers expect. Well, I like that. I mean, the direct is really nice on higher RPMs, but, you know, I think your engine stays cleaner if you go to port and lower RPMs. Um, port fuel injection does make keeping the intake valves cleaner. It makes it easier. Uh -huh. um, we obviously have solutions with the eye nowadays as we use on many of our engines. But this engine, um, fundamentally, if you think about it, in trucks, they're going to run for many years, very high mileage. Some of these vehicles will be in um, some pretty tough circumstances, northern Canada, Alaska, where maintenance isn't going to be really handy. And so if there's a problem ever with one of these, it has to be very easy to address with the available service. Oh, yeah. And that's, you know, in a commercial type application, a lot of times you're idling for hours, you know, whether it's in a roll off record truck or whatever it's in. I mean, even my truck, I, I sometimes I live in my truck and I let it idle for hours. And that's nice that uh, you can you can do that and not hurt the engine because that used to be a big thing. So, so in Super Duty, 
Um, I've got quite a few years working on engines for Super Duty. We have customers that in very cold climates, they idle for weeks. <laughs> and, and so we knew, <laughs> we, that, we knew that when we were designing this, yeah. and we took steps to make sure that if this is an emergency vehicle that's gotta be left running because it's so cold out there, or it's so hot and it's at a um, emergency site, yeah. it can just be left running, it won't have a physical issue you know, for its durability. Oh sure, well, that's you know, it could be ambulances, well services, a lot of things you idle forever. And those guys used to have to get diesels so they could put up with all that idling. That's nice that a gas engine is going to be dependable to do that. And these are all available. I guess I could ask the transmission guy, but you gonna put PTOs on all of these? Um, it'll depend on the class vehicle. Uh, the, the heavier vehicles, yes, they have PTOs. But I think F two fifty and F three fifty chassis certs don't, but. I'm, a, I'm an engine guy. I know. I, I keep talking to the wrong guy. That's just how it works. Well, thanks, Joe. I appreciate it. Oh, you're welcome. And hopefully we'll get to go play with these this summer. Should be good. Okay, we're at the launch of the 2020 Super Duty and a bunch of other things. And I'm here with Greg Stout. He's the guy who knows everything about the new 10-speed we've been waiting for to go into Super Duty. I thought it'd be out last year, but I guess I was wrong. But this is cool. Tell me all about it. So here's the new 10-speed torque shift transmission for the Super Duty. Uh, this new transmission comes in with more capabilities than the 6-speed it replaces. There's a lot of advantages of just going to 10 speeds over 6. And this uh, transmission was also designed from the ground up to be built Ford Tough. So I can go into each one of those separately. Uh, in terms of capabilities, uh, this new transmission migrates to a new uh, modern control scheme. And so that brings with it the ability to have uh, driver selectable uh, drive modes. So for instance, the customer can select um, normal mode or they can select a slippery mode if the roads are icy, or they can select an eco mode or deep snow, deep sand for that particular type of driving. Um, and then of course we have our tow haul mode uh, for towing. So tow haul mode now is in a dial thing, you move over, you rotate it to whatever one that instead of the push button on the stem of the shifter. So these, these selectable modes can be selected from the dashboard on one of the screens in the vehicle and that's how you can get into one of these custom selectable uh, calibration modes for the transmission. Okay, yeah, I just bought a new 150 and it has all that. Yep. And I, <laughs> I kept looking for the button to push for tow haul mode and it wasn't there. Because I had to rotate really yeah. the dial, but that's cool. Yeah, there's a diff different torque converter. So yeah, this, this transmission is significantly different from the F-150 transmission. Um, because it was designed from the ground up for the Super Duty powertrain lineup. And so this particular transmission, um, because the engines are a lot more capable in the Super Duty, this transmission is designed to suit. So uh, almost all of the parts on this transmission are significantly larger and more capable than the ones on the F-150 10-speed. Now the basic architecture and power flow is very similar to the F-150 10-speed, but this one has a lot more capability to match the powertrain lineup and to match the Super Duty customer's expectations for, you know, built forward tough over the life of the vehicle. Well, cool. Is it a different between that new 7.3 V8 gas versus the 6, the 6 6.7 diesel? So this transmission has the same architecture for all of those. There's some subtle differences, but depending on how the vehicle is outfitted, so um, depending on what kind of drive line you get, 4x4, four 4x2, four, four it might have a little bit of different attachment in the rear. The torque converters are a little bit different between gas and diesel. And um, the arrangement of the clutches and planetaries are a little bit different between gas and diesel. Again, tailored to what the demands of the powertrain are. So are these is the same amount of clutches in it, discs? And a gas and a diesel? Because they used to be, they took out some of the clutches for the gas engine in the old days. Same number of clutches, but some of the clutches have fewer discs in them for gas than for diesel. Because the diesel powertrain is you know, almost twice as capable as the gas powertrains. Yeah, I was thinking there had to be some differences there, a little more heavy dutiness. The casing the same? Is the planetaries all steel? Yeah, absolutely. Planetaries are steel. Um, there's... We went to a lot of effort to make sure that this transmission was built for tough, so it's got about 1.8 million miles of testing on it to make sure that it meets standards for robustness and durability. So uh, we definitely left no rock unturned with respect to making sure the transmission is robust. Okay, and then this says 
the big transmission cooler up front in front of the engine different or the same as what was before uh, so the trans cooler on this transmission is actually mounted very close to the transmission um, so the they pipe the, the engine coolant back to the trans it goes through the cooler there and it's mounted quite close to the trans and it's got enough airflow back there I suppose uh, you know because you got a fan on the front that kind of helps yeah so it's it's using the, the engine uh, or the the coolant from the front to cool it at the transmission. Oh, so that goes through the radiator then at some it point. goes through the radiator and then radiator fluid just comes back to the trans cooler. Okay. Well, that's cool. So is the filter different or is it still that little flat thing under the pan? Or Actually, the filter on this transmission is significantly enhanced. Uh, we have a, a, a larger filter and it's, um, it's a high efficiency filter. Uh, it's still designed for 150,000 mile uh, life. So same standard as before, and I believe that's best in class. Um, it's, it's a very capable filter that we have on this transmission. So the top three gears are overdrives. Top three are overdrives. So that would be what, six is direct, or is that? Seven is direct. Seven is direct. Okay. Yep. I, I used to know how to count. <laughs> well, that's cool. So that's, uh, I'm sure you've tested everything in the world. I mean, I was waiting for 10-speed. I just bought a new truck with a 10-speed on a, on a F-150 because I didn't know how soon this was going to come out with it. I thought it would be last year, but I was wrong. Well, I'm glad to see it coming out, so this will be available sometime this summer, I guess. I believe they're planning on sh uh, dealers getting vehicles uh, next fall, or this fall. Okay, cool. Was well, there anything else you want to tell me about? I probably interrupted you a few times, but <laughs> what else did you, did you have to say about it? I mean, I, you, you know all about it, so that's what I'm trying to figure out is all that, all that cool stuff. Well, we did put a fair bit of effort into making this an efficient transmission. So we've done what we could to reduce parasitic losses so that it's the most efficient transmission possible. One thing we've done on this transmission, which is similar to the F-150 transmission, is we've got an uh, off-axis variable displacement oil pump. So that allows us to be uh, efficient. Um, the pump load varies with what the need is rather than uh, simply cranking out a high torque all the time. Yeah, that's good. That's getting me a lot. You see that in a lot of different things now, that variable pump. Yep. Well, that's that's just cool. Yeah, it's uh, and it's same length, basically, as the other one, right? Yeah, one interesting thing about this, an engineering challenge for making this transmission, is the package challenge was to drop it into the same space that the old six-speed took. And, of course, you know, we always want to make the transmission as light as possible so that the truck can tow more. So uh, we were able to design this transmission only three and a half pounds more than the outgoing six-speed transmission. And we were able to add capability to the transmission and the extra four gears and only have it three and a half pounds more, which was a trick. Well, that's pretty cool. My left toe weighs three and a half pounds, so that's not much at all. Now, this will be on the diesel and this will be on the 7.3 gas. Will it be on the 6.2 gas too? It's available on some versions of the 6.2. The 6.2, some versions will still get a six-speed transmission, and this is available on some versions, depending on what the trailer tow rating is on those trucks. The higher trailer tow rating, 6.2, get this one. As well. Okay, well, good. So when you order a 6.2, get the highest tow rating you can. That's how I'd look at it. Well, thanks a lot. I appreciate it, Greg. Sure thing. Learned a lot. Thank you. Thanks.